Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. Jens Rizm was a Danish-American furniture designer. His work is a model of mid-century modern design. Today, we're going to build this floating side table inspired by him. Come see how we do it here in the garage. Right, let's have a look at today's project. Now the beauty of this project is its simplicity. The original was made out of walnut, but we're going to use a single piece of 1 by 10 by 8 foot long pine available at most home centers. Yeah, I've always been an admirer of Jen Rizm's work, and I recently saw this table at an antique store, and he valued simplicity, grace, and craftsmanship, and I thought this table was a great project for the show. Let's have a look. We have a large top, we have four tapered legs that I'm going to cut on the table saw using a simple jig. We have two aprons that sit below the surface. And then we have two aprons that sit above the leg, giving the appearance that this tabletop is floating. All right, first thing we need to do, cut our pieces to size. All right, the first thing we're going to do is cut up the pieces that make up our tabletop. Now they're 24 inches long. And before I get started and cut these, always remember, safety glasses and hearing protection if you have it. I'm doing a lot of talking but make sure you wear a dust mask. All right, the off cuts we're gonna use for our aprons and our table legs. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the other aprons. So again, we have two long aprons at 14 inches long, and our shorter ones are at 12 inches. All right, next, I need to cut four legs at 19 inches. So I'm just gonna cross cut this board to 19 inches. Okay, now I need to cut two aprons at 14 and a half inches. In my off cut, I'm going to use for the smaller aprons. So there we have it. Now I'm just going to go to the table saw and rip these to width. Yeah, the original table was made out of walnut, which a lot of mid-century modern furniture was. I chose to use off-the-shelf pine just to, to keep it accessible so people could make this project without any problems. All right, the first thing we're going to do are cut our four table legs. I've set the fence at two inches from our saw blade. That's the width of the, the legs. And if you're in doubt of how high you should set the blade, the perfect scenario is about a quarter of an inch above your workpiece. Just use the thickness of a pencil. It's about what you want. All right, I'm just going to turn on the dust collector and we'll cut the four legs the width.
Okay, there we go. We have our leg stock cut. Now we're just going to go and cut our aprons. All right. I've moved the fence over to two and a half inches, and now we're going to cut our long aprons. All right, there we have it. We have our two long aprons cut. I'm just gonna set the fence to four inches and we'll go ahead and cut the shorter aprons. We have all our parts for the table cut the size. Next thing I'm gonna do is cut the taper for the legs on the table saw. All right, let me show you what I did. I just took a piece of scrap plywood I had and I attached with some glue and some brads, just some off cuts of wood I had. I drew the taper I want. Now we're going from two inches down to three quarter inches long on our leg. So I drew my line and I simply attached these cleats on that taper line. What I've done is I'll put a couple of uh, double sided tape, a couple of strips of double sided tape on the plywood and I have a stop block here. So I'm just going to put my leg on here, butt it up against the cleats and press it down so that the tape is holding it. And I've set my fence to nine and a quarter inches. That's the width of my jig. I'm just gonna turn on the dust collector and we're just gonna keep this against the fence and cut our taper. We'll just do the same thing for the other three legs. Here we go, that looks great. We have all our four legs tapered. The next thing we need to do is go to the bandsaw and cut the profile out on our short aprons. Our two short aprons have a V-notch cut into them. And I just measured over to the center of the board and measured down three inches and drew a line to create that V. We're just gonna cut that out on the bandsaw. Now you wanna make sure you have a, a scrap piece of wood to use as a push stick if you need it. Make sure you let the blade come to full speed before you start and again, have your safety glasses and ears on. There we go, that looks great. We're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other apron. All right, let me show you what I did. Now, our legs are tapered, and they taper on the inside, meaning we want our 90 degrees on the outside. This taper turns out to be four degrees. So I had to go ahead and cut four degree angle on our short aprons to match that taper, and you can see how that fits nicely. Now, speaking of that angle, it's real easy to get turned around using biscuit joineries. Take your time and just double check everything. I've made a mark to show where my leg is on the outside. And I'm using my square here to just simply butt this up and I can see that that fits nicely. That's 90 degrees. I know that this is the inside where it tapers. If you get turned around, butt this up, you'll see that there's an angle there, a little gap, and it's wrong. So you can just simply turn it around and correct it. The original table used mortise and tenon joinery. I chose to use biscuit joinery, again, just to keep it accessible to most people. Now, when biscuit joinery first came out, it was kind of taboo. It, it, was, it took a while for, for woodworkers to embrace it. Um, the, the traditionalists just didn't believe in it, but really, it is a mortise and tenon joint. Um, the biscuit joiner is cutting that kerf or cutting the mortise, and then we have a tenon, our loose tenon, which is this biscuit made out of beech. And when you have your two mortises and you glue this biscuit in and you glue your pieces together, the biscuit swells with the moisture in the glue and creates this wonderful lock joint and it's rock solid. So I have my lines laid out 
on the inside of my legs to accept the biscuits for the short aprons. I have my lines laid out on the face of the legs to accept the long aprons. And you can see I have my lines there for the biscuit joints. We're just gonna go ahead and cut these. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is cut the biscuit slot in all of our aprons. And you wanna make sure you have your workpiece thoroughly clamped down. Now, we have a flat surface here on the bench and I'm using that as a reference. I'm laying the biscuit joiner on that flat surface and you push forward and you can see that blade protrude through. So I, I wanna make sure that I have the right face down. If I turn this around, that cutter can cut sort of off-centered and it won't line up properly. So you can see I've made a little mark on here which tells me I want that face up and then I know how to place these down when I go to cut our biscuits. Um, we're using number 10 biscuits and I've just set the cutter for a number 10 cut. All right. You want to start the biscuit joiner away from your workpiece. If you start it with it on, it can slide and skip away on you. All right, there we go, that's perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead, turn this around, do that in, and do the same thing on all the aprons. There we go, that looks great. Now we have all our aprons done, we're just gonna go ahead and cut the biscuit slot in our legs. All right, again, make sure your work is thoroughly clamped down. I've put our legs on their face, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a biscuit slot in the side of the leg, and when we put a biscuit in, it'll join the short apron to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other three legs. All right, let me show you what I did. After I cut the biscuit slot in the side of our legs, I turned them over on their face, and I cut the biscuit slot on the face of the leg, and that is to accommodate our long apron. All right, let's go to the bench and glue everything up. All right, first thing we're gonna do is glue up the boards that make up our tabletop. Now, before you start, you want to make sure you have everything at hand. You have a, a cloth or a rag to wipe up any excess glue, a brush if you need it, a mallet in case you glue up the wrong boards and they set a little, you might have to take it apart. Make sure you have enough clamps. Yeah, it's a pretty large tabletop surface actually, so um, when you're gluing it up, you just want to try to make sure that you get boards that blend together, that the grain looks like it's blending in together so that when you do glue it up, it just looks like one solid piece of wood. I have three boards here. I have two clamps holding it on the other one side, and then I have another clamp to go on top of it. You want to alternate the clamping pressure so the boards don't buckle on you. you want to keep them flat as possible. It's a tabletop. All right, I'm just going to tilt up these two boards, 
and I'm just going to put a bead of glue. Now a lot of people will use a card or a brush to cover this all. What I do is I put a bead of glue on the top edge of the board. You don't need too much. You need enough to make sure it's doing its job, but you don't need copious amounts. So you're just going to spend a lot of time cleaning this up. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. There. That's a fine bead of glue, so what I'm going to do is just turn this down, and now the glue rolls down my joint. Push that board towards it, and I just slide these along to create a little friction. Do the same thing on our top board. Bring these down. Slide them together. There we go. Let's get up. Just a little clamping pressure at first. Just so you can feel it grab. Now we'll put this on top. These clamps are aluminum, so you don't have to worry about it, but if they were steel, I would have some pads underneath to raise these up so that the metal doesn't react with the glue and stain the wood. The aluminum doesn't stain. So there we go. I just want to make sure these are flush. Push down, make sure they're flush. I'm gonna, now I'm going to tighten up that top one. And if you can't get the side ones flush, you can always use a C-clamp to clamp them together. Push them down. I want to make sure they're level on our clamps. And that's what we're looking for. Just enough squeeze out. Again, you don't need a ton. And you don't need to reef on these. You don't need a ton of pressure. Just making sure that board's flush. There we go. That looks perfect. Just going to put this aside. Go ahead and glue in our biscuits. All right, we have our tabletop glued up. Now I'm going to glue in biscuits to the end of the aprons. I don't need to put any into the legs. Once those biscuits have dried, we'll glue up the table base. Okay, I'm just going to put a little glue in the legs. You don't need a lot. You don't want to have to clean up that mess, but you do need it to do its job. Now remember, it's very easy to get confused. You want the apron above the legs. It's a little different, but that's what creates that floating table look. Okay, let's put that down. Now remember, this biscuit's going to swell and create this lock joint because of the moisture in the glue. Just bring that 
that up. All right, you wanna make sure your clamps are in the center so that you get equal pressure all around and that they're flat on the clamp surface. Just going to move this one over and apply a little pressure just to make sure. All right, that looks great. We're just going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. All right, I went ahead and I took our clamps off. You can see how this is coming together. It looks great. So we have our two sides done. Before I go ahead and glue the other aprons on, I'm just going to sand our pencil marks off. It's best to do it now because it's going to be a lot harder when this whole base is glued together. Okay, turn our dust on. All right, now that we have all our parts sanded, we're just going to go ahead and glue our long aprons into our sides. Just going to put a little bit of glue in the biscuit slot. And I'm just going to put a little on the shoulder of our tendon or a biscuit here. Make sure you have everything handy. You want a mallet, a rag, just in case. Some extra clamps. I'm going to put this on and then turn it over. All right, again, you want to, make you want to make sure you have proper clamping pressure. You want to put this in the center. Just enough to close up that joint. You don't want to reef on it. All right, that looks great. We're just going to let this cure. When it's done, we'll attach our tabletop. All right, let me show you what I did. Once our base was dry, I went ahead and took the clamps off. Now I've sanded all of our parts. I went ahead and I cut our tabletop to size and sanded it. I then put a Forstner bit in my drill gun and I drilled a series of a, an eighth of an inch deep holes in the top of our aprons. And what that does is it takes our figure eight fasteners. Now there's many ways of attaching the top, but because we're doing a floating top, we're using the figure eights. Now, what I do is I put it in here, we screw this in, and that allows the top to expand and contract, and these figure eights will pivot around the screw. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and screw in this last one. We'll turn our base over and attach it to our top. Yeah, there's many ways to fasten uh, the base to the tabletop. I chose the figure eight fasteners just because we didn't have a lot of room or a lot of material to fasten to the top. So they work perfectly for that. Also with the floating top, the, the look of that floating top, it really works well. Now you can take a measure, I'm just eyeballing this to see if it's even on both sides. And we'll just go ahead and screw these in. All right, that looks great. I think I'm going to finish this with a coat of oil and a coat of wax. Well, I think Jen's Rism would be proud. As usual, I had a great time building this project with you. I hope you come back and see us here again in the garage.
bet you know I'm doing just fine But hey, hey, I'm doing fine out here on the road As long as I have friends to call, I'm never alone Folks wonder how to take off I just gotta go down the basement in a second and get some <laughs> So <laughs> yeah.